Europe's Kitchen is uh, one of five cultural projects which are marking Germany's presidency of the Council of the European Union. And um, I would say it's maybe one of the projects that's most unusual because to, although food is so much a part of our everyday lives in Europe, the idea of the kitchen as a frame in which to think about European unity is perhaps not one that we, we use so often. So um, I think there's something really special about this particular project and this way of bringing people together to think about, experience, feel, shape Europe. In Copenhagen, the idea perhaps uh, took a form that was closest to the original concept. The Portuguese artist and uh, writer and performance maker Patricia Portela created a very special dinner in the home of Philip Ostrovitz, a local resident. With all that happened, we were not sure if I was going to ever get here. So I thought, well, I don't need to get there, but the piece has to get there. I'm a compulsive letter writer, I always was. To write a letter, to address it to somebody, let alone somebody you don't know, to explain yourself and to wait for it to arrive and so on, there's a lot of rituals involved. So I thought, if I share it through the guests, the ingredients through the guests and the stories through the guests, when they gather, they bring me along. I will get there through my piece. She made a dinner and a menu that was inspired by a painting by Tintoretto, the invention of the Milky Way. And she basically took us on a journey through this meal into imagining other ways of being together in a time of pandemic because this painting was also painted during the bubonic plague and so she connected time past and future and present and um, made us all think about Europe in a really broad way. In Greece, the German artist Misha Leinkauf worked with local students and artists to create artworks that were put into a public square. And what he was interested in seeing what happens to public space when you put art there, how it changes the way we encounter each other, um, what we do to and with each other um, in the presence of, the, of these artworks and of this occasion that he created with other people. Uh, I mean, there it was really wonderful to see what a team effort it was uh, to realize this weekend of gatherings. Wir haben das Projekt jetzt auf drei Tage ausgeweitet. Was mir wichtig war, erstens damit die Arbeiten der Studenten und diese, dieser ganze Effort, den die hier reingesteckt haben, auch besser sichtbar wird und auch besser genutzt wird, nachhaltiger genutzt wird. Und zweitens, weil ich finde, dass solche Abende sich auch entwickeln. Das spricht sich erstens rum, dass das passiert, wenn es gut läuft. Leute kommen, Leute gehen, Leute kommen mehrmals. Und diese Offenheit, die war ganz wichtig und ich glaube, das geht nicht nur an einem Abend, sondern das muss man ein bisschen erweitern.
In Wroclaw, I had the pleasure of participating in this project as an artist um, and not just as a curator. And um, we invited many different people to join in what we created there, including um, students from the School of Art, students who work with ceramics. This turned out to be a really wonderful and symbolic way of thinking about Europe because they, they made it clear to us that ceramic is such a durable and strong material and that like, it can last for you know, thousands of years and at the same time it's really fragile and has to be handled very carefully. And this is a metaphor for Europe, which is, I think, kind of strong and fragile at the same time. Bei meiner Keramik, ja, das habe ich dann auch so genützt, dass die einzelnen Länder für mich hier wie, wie Blätter, kann man sagen, die dann zusammengefasst sind in einer Schale und die verschiedenen Töne, diese ganze Chemie, die wir benutzen, die kommt auch aus verschiedenen Staaten von Europa. Die Formen müssen bezpośrednio anwenden, müssen bezpośrednio mówić o tym, że Głównym tematem moich prac jest rozmowa. I to doskonale wpisuje się też w temat smaku Europy. Ponieważ smaki dopełniają się, uzupełniają, czasami są sprzeczne, czasami konkurują, ale mimo wszystko tworzą całość, cały, cały czas przyplatając się wzajemnie, dopełniając. The basis for everything that happened in Wrocław was a questionnaire that I sent to uh, Polish people in Poland and in different cities around Europe asking how does Europe taste to you and their answers which came back and which were very inspiring and very foody in, in a way um, these were sent to the ceramic students to the food think tank um, collective and and they used those to come up with their creative responses um, to this idea of what Europe is and could be and might taste like and, um, and those are the works that then were part of the evening we had together um, in this museum cafe in the centre of Wroclaw. For Tallinn, um, the artist Katarina Seder um, came up with the idea of using the playground as uh, a setting for seeing how we come together because she says that that's the first, the sand pit is the first place where children start to cook and eat and offer each other things, you know, playing with the sand. And her idea was what would happen as adults if we were to have that same spirit of openness to whoever we meet there. And so she created this, um, this very special table and uh, a menu that was placed in the playground and adults were invited to make friends and come together in a very spontaneous way in the way children do. And it's very funny to watch the hesitation and uh, the kind of doubt that people have um, in such a moment and then uh, really delightful to see the people who overcame the hesitation and sat down together and ate something and talked. Um, so it was a very playful and fun and unusual way of bringing people together, people that don't know each other and yet could find something in common if they were just open enough and spontaneous enough in the moment. Madrid, the um, Hungarian artist Apa Dobriban. Buenas noches, señoras, señoras. 
prepared a very special evening, which in the end had to be realized online because the pandemic conditions made travel difficult. And um, in Arpad's work, uh, what he does is, is he makes these very ordinary acts of cooking and eating extraordinary because he uses very special ingredients that come out of ways of producing that are to do with sustainability and to do with, um, with history and different cultural ways of producing and preserving. He puts his menus into a narration, into a story that makes you very attentive to, to the details of what you're consuming so that it's at once a sensual experience and an intellectual experience and a wonderful journey into different stories and times. And he did all this from uh, Germany. He, he prepared food that he sent a few days before to Madrid and then he joined the, the dinner table digitally um, these 10 people who were sitting there and he led them through the evening talking about what he made and why and I happened to be in Berlin eating the same food that he had also sent me and this was kind of a very special moment to think that Arp had made these dishes that traveled to Madrid, traveled to Berlin and all of us ate the same thing cooked by his hand and it was a very wonderful way of connecting at a time when we couldn't get to each other physically. In Ljubljana, the Italian artist Marinella Sanatore um, invited local residents to send in a, a self-portrait in sound of themselves or of their city. And her idea was to collect all these sounds and to make a composition out of them, which would be a sort of symphony of the city. We then invited artists in Ljubljana to make a visual expression of. And so once again, we have this sense of many different layers um, of contributions, um, many different participants uh, coming together to make something possible. And Marinella's idea was that in the same way that with cooking, you have different ingredients that make a dish. Um, with the symphony, you have many different parts, many different sounds. Uh, many different very personal, intimate moments that make something collective. Sound is a very powerful uh, language and uh, underestimated sometimes or even not perceived properly, but when people get in uh, touch with this uh, more ephemeral, let's say, material, uh, they immediately understand how it's part of our daily life, but also our imaginary. The um, writer Geraldine Schwartz um, had a fantastic idea for Palermo, inspired um, by an old market, La Bucciria, and her idea was to set a frame in this marketplace that would be like a living painting of how things are there now. And sadly, because of the pandemic, everything was cancelled. So what we ended up doing in Palermo then it was um, inviting, again, students from the local university to do a modern interpretation of the Guduso painting. But I do feel a real sense of loss that uh, her idea couldn't be realized in the way that she wanted it. In Glasgow, the Danish artist Jeanette Ehlers um, showed some of her video works, um, pieces that grapple with ideas of race, of the gaze, of visibility, who is seen and not seen. And there we collaborated with um, a local food collective called Soul Food Sisters, and we invited a group of um, 
thinkers and writers to respond to these artworks. And the Soul Food Sisters created a menu out of that, which was then available to local residents in Glasgow's East End um, as a gift. They were invited just to partake in this menu and share some of their thoughts about Europe in return. When you can't be together in the usual ways, and when the question of what solidarity is um, has a very different charge. And I think Ivana Saiko, the Croatian writer, um, explored that really powerfully in Marseille at a theater with a group of young children. Today you are going to perform several improvisations that I have called exercises for being together. These improvisations are not a complete theatrical piece. There is no right or wrong way of performing them. They are simply exercises in which we try to stay together. Over the course of this project it became really clear that um, hospitality needs time and patience and generosity. And these qualities are what all the artists brought um, to their particular cities and what all the participants brought as well. And I think all of us understand that Europe is a very imperfect project. This, this, the European Union is a place that excludes many and um, that is full of inequalities and injustices. And yet nevertheless, it is something worthwhile because it's unique in this attempt of 27 nations um, trying to share and trying to be, I guess, better in how they deal with one another. Um, I think for me one really essential thing is that of course this unity is not a unity that can close up and just look inwards, but always has to look outwards, always has to look beyond to the rest of the world. And this is something else that all the artists, I think, had in the back of their minds. In some, in some places, this was more apparent and more obvious, the connection to elsewhere. But I think it was at the heart of how everybody was trying to think about Europe as, as somewhere that has to understand itself as connected to, dependent on, and having a responsibility for um, the rest of the world too.